Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include European Union officials pledge $1.4 billion to help former Caribbean colonies. Russia warns Ukraine against EU deal. The European Union to provide 124 million euros in support to the African Union mission in Somalia. And the EU mulls a legal move against Italy over Ilva steel plant emissions. Plus, EU prejudice blocks Turkey's membership, says ministers. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The European Union says it will make $1.4 billion available to former Caribbean colonies in coming years. The announcement comes as EU officials met with CARICOM leaders late Friday to talk about how the money would be dispersed from 2014 to 2020. Discussion focused on crime and security, climate change, regional integration and providing special assistance to Haiti. The EU remains the Caribbean region's largest donor, dispersing $64 million last year for a variety of projects. $1.4 billion of your lovely Euro taxes. A top Russian official on Saturday warned Ukraine against signing a landmark trade deal and cooperation agreement with the European Union, saying Moscow would retaliate with trade restrictions that could push this ex-Soviet republic towards default. Speaking at a conference in the Black Sea city of Yalta, Russian President Advisor Sergei Glazhev dismissed the benefits of a planned free trade deal between the EU and Ukraine as mythology. He warned that tariffs and trade checks that Russia would impose after the deal could cost Ukraine billions of dollars and result in a default. Who will pay for Ukraine's default, which will become inevitable, Glazhev asked. One has to be ready to pay for that. The African Union Commission signed the agreement providing further European Union support in the amount of €124 million Euros to the AU mission in Somalia for the period June to December 2013. This additional funding brings their overall EU contribution to AMISOM to approximately €600 million Euros since March 2007. The EU contribution will continue to cover the costs of troop allowances for military, police and civil components, as well as operational costs for the mission headquarters. This support is critical in allowing AMISOM to continue to fulfil its mandate. More funds being lavishly poured into the African continent. Now, Peter contacted me yesterday to highlight an article in the UK national press which announced that EU funding to the Congo had failed to reach the people. But it had not gone to waste, as government ministers had issued themselves with a deserved 800% pay rise, ensuring EU funds were not simply wasted. The European Commission may open a legal procedure against Italy for failing to control toxic emissions at the Ilva steel plant. Currently at the centre of a high-profile environmental probe, a Commission source aware of the dossier told Reuters on Friday. The source said an infringement procedure against Italy had been included in the list of EU proceedings to be published next Thursday. However, a source of Italy's environmental ministry and other Commission sources said Rome and Brussels were still negotiating, with Italy trying to prevent the move. Now, I suppose Italy can relax because Tata Steel is no doubt waiting in the wings to provide production outside of EU jurisdiction and for half the cost, another shining example of effective EU policies in action. <music> Turkey will probably never join the European Union because of prejudicial attitudes by the bloc's existing members, Ankara's chief EU negotiator said, in what appeared to be the first high-level acknowledgement that its decades-long bid might fail. 
Turkey was more likely to negotiate special access to the EU, like Norway. EU Affairs Minister Egmen Bargis said, according to an article in London's Telegraph newspaper, which was published on Saturday. He said the country had suffered from prejudice in both its EU membership aspirations and its recent lost bid to host the Olympics, without naming any countries. Today in our video library, fracking bans are highly likely to be attacked under the planned Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, TTIP. In this video, Laurie Wallach points out that the EU and the USA started the first round of negotiations in June 2013. Investment chapters or treaties give additional rights and powers to foreign investors, such as oil and gas companies like Lone Pine or Chevron. Fracking is an environmentally risky form of extracting gas or oil by injecting chemicals under high pressure into shale or coal bedrock formations. Now, there is a body building early political support for fracking here in the UK in the form of shale gas. Personally, I'm really concerned that the politicos singing the rhetoric have not fully understood the ramifications of these projects. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.